Well, next time, then I'm wearing the hat. Hi, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Nine o'clock, it is live with our brand new Craft Along. Uh, it's great to have your company. If you've been joining in with them so far, I'm sure we've had a lot of fun. I certainly have learned so much as well. Um, but uh, do not worry, in case you're thinking, I paid for this and then I've got, I've got him. No, you haven't. <laughs> I'm here watching with you. Catherine is here. Hello. Lovely. I'm very well, thank you. This is, I'm having a, a lovely day today because I started with Hayley, yeah. uh, with, uh, with uh, now with Hayley, only one, and now I've got a lovely hour with yourself as Aww. well, which is really nice. Um, but these these have been going so well. The they Carter really, Longs. really have, and this is the third and final. Um, Episode. Well, what's the other word I use? Not uh, episode. Um, Installment. Installment of oh. uh, the knitting craft along. We finished the crochet on Thursday. Right. Yes. This is the final one for the knitting. But as you know, we've oh, got we, more to we've come. We've got we're more to come. And you can still get involved, by the way, as well with these. So they're still available if you would like to go for them, and you can watch them, of course, and catch up. So you you've not missed out on anything. But if you're like me and you're new to seeing some of these other crafts. So I've already done some lovely um, sewing with Hayley Smith. We did some lovely yep. sewing. If you've been working with Catherine already, for example, if you've done some of your paintings with Matthew Palmer and you've joined in with those, we've got plenty of projects to go. It's a great way, roll your sleeves up and getting past that first base and going, okay, how do I do that? This is absolutely the perfect courses for you to do. And it's all fun and it's interactive. So if you've got any comments you want to join in as well with Catherine, you can email us, of course, we are live right now, studio at thecraftstore.com. Com, uh, and we would love to hear from you. Now we've got some new uh, workshops coming up for you as well. Have a look at these. We're starting in the early part of August for you to get involved. So the first one we've got for you coming up with lovely Hayley is going to be the embroidery trinket box. I've got it here. I'll show you in a moment or two. That starts on the 2nd of August. It's only a fiver if you'd like to join on that one. Another one we've got on the 3rd of August. I mentioned Matthew Palmer. He's got another watercolour uh, painting course uh, coming up for you from the 3rd. That's again a fiver. Then we've got another one with Hayley which is your lovely messenger bag that is absolutely brilliant that project and so um, proving very very popular that's only seven pounds as well if you'd like to join for that particular one which is absolutely brilliant and we've got a further three to bring to you as well we've got the crochet granny square bag that's with our lovely Catherine that starts on the 5th of August that's just eight pounds to join in with that one then we've got the proggy rag rugging hedgehog course that's with Hayley that's again starting on the 6th of August the day after just a fiver and then we've got the Knitted Cozy Hat course. That's with our very own Katie Barber as well. That starts on the 7th, and that's just also £7. These are great for you to do yourself. Or if you think there's someone else that may benefit from that, what a lovely present to buy them and say, I've bought you the kit, I've bought you everything that you need. Why don't you just watch this programme and get involved and have a go in the comfort of your own home as well, privacy of that. And here are the projects uh, that you'll be looking at to work with and uh, you'll get a chance to... Here's your, the, the lovely hats. We've got the little... Uh, um, the little... What's it? The... Proggy, that's it. Uh, proggy little hedgehog we've got in here as well. We've got the knitting uh, of the bag here, which is beautiful with the squares. We've got the little trinket box uh, that's down here, which is so, so cute. Absolutely beautiful. If you want to start your projects on that, that is absolutely gorgeous. And the bag itself, you will be getting it with the material with the black and white. But if you wanted to with that, of course, you can colour your own first, as you can see an example of here, and work with this. It is absolutely brilliant. So... Enjoy the course. I'm going to be watching and learning as well. Again, don't forget, if you want to get involved, you can do studio at thecraftstore.com and you can get in touch with Catherine directly if you've got any other questions. Catherine, how do we pick up from where we are? Right, well, first of all, have you ever knitted, Scott? I, I've never knitted. Do you fancy having a go? I'm up for anything. I'm up We've for anything. got the tail to do with the cat and there's only a few stitches, there's only four. That's, like, in for a penny, in for a pound, that's what, what it's then? all about, isn't it? Do you know what? I'm going I'll get to a just, chair. I'm going to lend you these knitting needles. If somebody can find you some yarn, you can work with us. I don't that know if somebody perfect. can get those sanitizers over you very to you. Much. Um, and yeah, we can find some yarn for Scott, then he can join in. But first of all, obviously just to remind everybody of if you've missed any of the instalments at all. The yarn that you received is not the yarn that I've been working with during the craft along, simply because if I do bring in the yarn that you've all been sent, it's this one, you can see it's very difficult to see the actual stitches. So for demonstration purposes, I've been using some of my own yarn and you can see a complete difference between, you know, the knit side that we've been doing and also the pearl side as well so you can see a complete difference between those stitches now if you've done your homework 
you should have got to the point where you're about to cast off. So I was listening to Scott and Sasha earlier on. And uh, yeah, Sasha said she can't cast on or cast off. No, that's right. But you're going to learn how to do that. And then we're going to set up a little business. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> now, if, for those of you that have finished your homework, you will have or should have something that looks just like this. It's almost like a number eight by the shape of it. It's, if I fold that in half, it's basically the same, same size, same shape in between that central waist part, shall we say. Now, obviously, because I'm using a different yarn for demonstration purposes and because this is a lot, lot thicker, my piece has ended up a lot bigger. So you can actually redo this pattern with any yarn. Obviously, the thinner the yarn, the smaller the cat's going to be. The thicker the yarn, the bigger it's going to be. But also, remember, if you are changing yarn as well, you tend to change up your needle size as well. So if you're working with anything above a double knitting, then you're likely to go up in a needle size as well. Right, if you have completed that homework, I did ask you to get right through to row number 59. That just leaves us our casting off. So, Scott, you won't be able to do this bit because we haven't cast on yet. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we'll be I'm casting. Thinking, I thought that would have to come first. <laughs> we'll be casting on when we do the tail, but we want to cast off these stitches. Right. That's something we haven't covered at all yet, so that's what we're going to do. So, if everybody's got their, their knitting ready to go, um, right now, the last row, which was row 59, asked you to knit so you should be starting on a pearl side I've actually done that pearl side and I'm going to cast off on the knit side but to be honest it's not going to make a difference so whichever side is facing you it doesn't matter just work with what you've got but the process is going to be exactly the same so I'm right-handed so I tend to hold the needle with all the stitches in my left hand and the empty needle in my right hand. And of course, with knitting, you're going to transfer all those stitches over to the opposite needle. So what is now empty is going to end up with stitches on it. Okay. Or it would do if we were still knitting and purling, oh. but we're not, we're casting off. I really feel like I should have been here for the first two <laughs> lessons. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is like we're going back to the beginning in a sense. Right, so what we're going to do is take our empty needle. So if you're left-handed, you're probably just doing everything the opposite way around, but it's the same instructions. Take that needle. We're going to put that needle into our knit stitch as though we are just going to knit normally. And that's actually what we're going to do. So being a knit stitch, the needle, the empty needle goes behind the needle with the stitches on it. So you've got that cross, but the empty needle is behind. We're going to take the yarn around the needle and through that cross. And to do a knit stitch, we then pull through the needle to find the loop and we take that off onto our empty needle. Now that is, of course, how we normally knit, but we are going to cast off. But before we can take any stitches away, we've got to do another knit. So it's exactly the same. We'll go into the stitch, take the yarn around, pull that through, take it off the needle. So we've now got two needles on our, what was empty needle, two stitches, sorry. We're then going to pick up the first loop, the first stitch that we've created and transferred over, and we're going to pass that over the second one. Look what's happened, Scott. You've only got one stitch now. Oh, I see. So you've cast off a stitch. Oh. So we're going to do it again. So now we've, we've got one stitch on that needle. We're going to go in, exactly the same method again, round with the yarn in between the cross, slide that needle through to pick up the loop, take it off the needle so we've now got two stitches and we're going to do the same thing again pick up that first stitch and just pass it over the second one making sure that you keep that second loop that second stitch on your needle but because you're crossing it over it's locked into position so it can't go anywhere we've now cast off two stitches two stitches yeah loving this so you're going to end up with one stitch again so we'll repeat again into the stitch yarn around pull through to find the loop take that off the needle we're going to go into the first stitch on the needle we're going to pass that over so you've just got that one stitch again and release 
we've now cast our three stitches. So you can see what's happening. You can see those stitches, how they're locked into position. Yep. You've got that V shape there. And that is simply all you do to cast off. You're just going to repeat that method every single time. So we will have to get to the end of this because I need the needles for the cat's <laughs> tail. So I'm just going to keep repeating that. If you're following along, along at home, then you can cast off with me. If you're watching or recording, of course, you can do this a little bit later. I know a lot of you like to do that. You like to watch, study, and then, you know, work back because you can stop and start if you're recording. But this is a very easy method and you can see what's happening. You can see how that cast off edge is now growing pretty quick. Don't be afraid to use your finger on the end of the needle to stop that second stitch falling off. Can you see it coming along there? Oh, I see, yes. So it's yep. nice and neat. Let's just get to the end of this because it's a little bit different when you get to the final stitch because um, you will end up with one stitch left on your needle, obviously, because every time, just drop that one there, every time we're passing that stitch over, we're left with one little loop. Now, do you know, this is not as easy as it looks doing this live, Scott, <laughs> don't because <laughs> when don't I you knit say that. <laughs> well, no, no, I don't mean the actual stitching, the position I'm having to sit for the camera. Oh, I see. Because oh, I'm kind course. of outstretched with yeah. my arms at home. You've got if a I was, glass of wine in it and you're going <laughs> <laughs> if, I was, if I was at home, I would be sat back against the sofa, dogs curled around oh. me. The knitting would be almost sat on my lap as I'm doing it. You know, I'd probably be watching something on the TV. But as I am here, I'm kind of stretching over the table just for the cameras. But, you know, other than that, there's no difficulty at all with the stitches themselves. These are very basic knitting stitches that we've done to create this. Right, so I'm on to the last bit now. We've got that first stitch, we've got that second stitch. I've got none left on what was the needle that started with all the stitches. I'm still going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to take that first stitch, pass it over. So we've left with that one little loop there. And then all I'm going to do is cut the wool and pull that through, oh. pull that loop through. And there we are. I'm now cast off, okay? Oh, nice. And you would just weave that loose end in when you'd finished. Right. Okay, now, um, so as I explained earlier on, because I've used a much thicker yarn for demonstrating with, and it does want to curl in on the edges just because of the type of yarn it is, you can see how much bigger that actually is to the yarn that everybody else has been sent. Right. So, you know, it's very, very easy to adapt patterns when they're simple stitches like this and make things of different sizes. You could even increase on the amount of stitches across the width of the body and just increase and decrease where it tells you. Oh, OK. But okay. start yeah. with more stitches. So very easy to adapt, and I think everybody will grasp that. Right, we, we are obviously going to show you how to put the, the final um, pieces together in a little while, but before that, we do have to do the cat's tail. So this is where you come in, Scott. Well, they've got no yarn for me at the moment. Oh, th but, I'm sure um, there's some in I've the got, box over there. It's OK, I've got some needles, but what I was doing, I was... <laughs> I was, I was, look at this, I made this earlier. Um, I was just miming, trying to go along with it at the moment. But that's, that's okay. I'm, I'm quite happy at the moment. Because that's, that, that's, it's, it's, see what we can do. Okay, okay. right. Well, if we, if we can find some yarn for Scott, which would be wonderful, because Scott's never, ever knitted before. Never, never. Never knitted. Oh. And we're going to cast on. But we're only working with four stitches to start that's with. That's good. I'd probably only wait two. But if, if you can do this, Scott, yeah. within a very short space of time, you will learn how to cast on, Ooh. how to knit, how to purl, how to increase, okay. and how to cast off. Might take me, last time to do it 20 minutes to thread a needle, <laughs> might take me 20 to find the end okay. of the stuff. <laughs> do you know how to do a slip knot? Um, what do you think the answer is? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. OK, well, we're going to do the slip knot first. I thought, good. That's what okay. I woke up this morning thinking. Let's do that. Have you found the end of the yarn? I have found the end. Wonderful. Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed. Right. So, I'm also right-handed. So, what okay. I do, Scott, I take the tail end of the yarn. Yeah. So, it's facing to my right. OK. OK. I'm going to make a little loop, not right at the end of the yarn. You want that tail end. Make a little loop and hold that between your thumb and your forefinger of your left hand if you're right-handed. Okay. Okay, yep. Then take the tail end. Oh, I should have done that a bit further down. Yeah, okay, tail end, to, yeah. Yeah, you can have that a little bit longer if you wish. Take that tail end and you're going to wrap that around the loop, but loosely. 
Okay. Okay. And then you're going to thread that tail end through the loop that you've just made. Okay. Okay. Just pull that through. So you've still got the loop that's at the top. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah. It looks like you're doing that nicely. Okay. Right. Take one of your needles. Okay. Pop that into the loop that's sticking up. In. Yeah. Take the end of the yarn that's attached to the ball. Yes. And pull it. Yes. Get in. Well Get in. done, can we have Scott. A, can I have an overhead yes. camera for this, please? No. <laughs> uh, can I have a close-up there on that? Because look at that, everybody. That concludes tonight's Craft Along. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time. OK. Well done. Can't right. Now, it's going to get a little bit trickier. Oh. OK, so we're now going to cast on. Cast on. S cast on. So because you're right-handed, you want to hold the needle that's got the stitch on it in your left hand. Oh, that's okay. really. You want the yarn that's attached to the ball to your right. <laughs> it will make it easy, otherwise you'll get tangled up. OK. There is a great yarn spinner, I presume we've got it for sale again, um, that you can pop your yarn balls on and then you don't have to keep untangling, it just spins around. Oh. I bought one last week, mine arrived... Uh, a couple of days ago, it's brilliant. Oh, brilliant! Is it a yarn holder? It's yes. You put your butt yarn ball on it, and then it spins around. So when you pull on the yarn, that sounds good. It turns around. It stops the yarn getting tangled up. Oh, that sounds very good. I think I okay. need one of them. Oh, that, that, oh, there's one there. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, I've got all the mod cards. If I can't get this right, I'm in uh, trouble. Th these, I have genuinely bought one of these. These are brilliant. Ooh. So you thread your yarn ball onto. That's it. Oh, and if you pull oh. on the end of the, the yarn, that will spin round, you see. So, oh. there you go. Oh, look at that. There you go. <laughs> what? <I love> it. <laughs> you I'm are being a treated right tonight. Night. I know. Right, OK. You've got all the tools now, so no excuses, oh, Scott. Sorry, yeah. uh, right, so lost. what we're going to do, we're going to cast on. Now, those that have been following along will have done this right at the very beginning, but it's nice to have a recap anyway, because you do tend to forget if you're not used to doing it. So take your empty needle. Yeah. You're going to put it into the loop, your slip knot. So it doesn't matter if it loosens off a bit, it'll make it a little bit easier for you. Crossing that needle so it goes underneath the left-hand needle that's got the stitch on it. So you're forming a cross. Yeah. Okay. That's it, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Take the yarn that's attached to the ball, so that's oh. the yarn oh, okay. that's to your right. Yeah. yeah. You're going to take that around the back needle <laughs> from the back. Can you see what I'm doing? Oh, I see it. Around the back. Yeah. And thread it into the centre of the cross where they cross over. Okay, yeah. Okay, give it a little pull because it'll just click into place. Oh, yeah, okay. Have you got that? I think so. Right. Now, now it gets a little bit tricky because you're going to slide down the needle on your right until you pick up the loop. I'm, shall I do that again? Yeah. Do you want to watch? Yeah. OK, so for anybody that's not done this before or has forgotten how to cast on, so you take your yarn around the needles, click that through, pull it through into the centre of the cross, then you're going to slide that needle that was empty. I use my fingertip here, just on the end of that needle, so it doesn't go too far. And you take it so it comes above that needle now, but keeping hold of the loop. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just see the concentration I on my can face? See, I can see your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, OK. OK. Yeah, I think so. If you've done that, right, so you've got a loop on both needles now. Uh, oh, no, I'm still on the same... Oh, uh, What's I done there? <laughs> That's all right, Is I it? think. It looks all right from here. I'll right. take that. I'll it looks OK, that. I think. Uh, it's hard for me to see, so you're a bit of a distance away. Oh, no, right, now what you're going to do is the loop that's on the right-hand needle, seen as you're left-handed, yeah. vice versa if you're... Um, sorry, you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you're probably doing it the other way around. You're going to then put that loop back on to the first needle, the needle that's in your left-hand... Scott. <laughs> <laughs> so you've now got two stitches on your needle. Oh, I don't know if I have. OK. I think I've got... Um, what? You what? What was that? Go for yeah, time take, for a break. Yeah, that's it. Oh, you're no, you're doing it. So the needle that's in your right. Yeah. Let me just get that back on and my needle. Right. So I, I've got back to where you are, I think, Scott. Okay. So you've got a loop on both needles. Yeah. 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 Take the one in the right hand. Yeah. Cross it over and pick up that loop with the left hand needle. 
Can you see that if you watch the screen? Yeah. Okay. Pick and the slide <sighs> the right hand needle out so you've got both stitches on your left well, hand needle. Well, that's a bit needle. tricky to try and get it on. Oh, well, I was going to say, that's it. You've done it, but I'm looking at myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm so, that's it. <laughs> you've done well, it. Yeah, I've you've got nothing on my right needle. You've done it. You Get just on a stitch. Are you oh. ready? You've got two more goes now. Oh. So <laughs> the, the I think we're going to pick up again next week. <laughs> <laughs> the loop that, the loop that you've just put on your needle, you're going to go back in with the empty needle, so you get to make that cross again. So put it from underneath the loop. Yeah. Underneath the loop, behind the left hand needle, so you form that cross. Oh, how do you get what uh, okay. I don't know why I keep looking at the screen to see you, I because don't I can't know. see you on the screen, can I? You don't Right, so Right. What Okay. Have you, have you, have oh, you well, that was the loop that I was... I was right. Got, watch, right. Watch me again. I'll okay. take mine out. So you've got two loops on that left-hand needle. I think so. What, what, one and a half. <laughs> 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 I don't want to brag. Have you, have you split the yarn a bit? I think so. Right. OK. Oh. Even, even if you've only got one loop on there, it's, yeah, all right, it's fine. I'll we take can manage. That. Right. So go in from the bottom of your loop, if you've only got one but everybody else should have two, <laughs> in from the bottom of this stitch and take that empty needle so it crosses underneath. Okay, so you form the cross I'm, again. I think I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. Take the yarn. Oh, this is it. OK. The yarn that's attached to the ball. Yeah. Take it around the back of the needle and through the cross. Oh. OK, I think so. OK, yeah. Around that round. Yeah. OK. Yeah. The, this is the trickiest bit until you get used to it. Now you have to slide that right hand needle and pick up, slide it so it comes from underneath the left hand needle, but you keep hold of the loop on it. <laughs> <laughs> and pull it through. I can't tell you, it's hard with glasses on, isn't it? This. I've, got, I've, I've lost it a little so bit. So you, you should. You, I, we think you've got it, Scott. Do you? We think you've I got jove. it. I Jove. Yeah. Yeah. Right, OK, so you've now got two stitches on your left-hand needle. Oh, no, I've not put it on. I've not pushed One. It. Have you not pulled it through? That go to there, then? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. Oh, no. What right. I've done is I've okay. created a... I think this is... I've gone back to what Hayley Smith taught me, which is a messy knot on my thread. Well, do you know what? If you're lagging behind, I'm going to have to speed yeah, up you a bit. Yeah, you carry on. You carry on. Otherwise, you're not going to get this tail done. I will master done. this. Right, I will master okay. this. You carry on. Bless so, you, though. Thank you. <laughs> right. Everybody else, you've now got that loop on but your right hand needle. Don't forget, I'm here to make everybody else feel good. <laughs> you're then going to transfer that back onto the needle that you started with, which gives you your third stitch. So you've cast on again. We're going to do that one more time because you've got four stitches that you need. So we go in from the bottom of the stitch, forming the cross, go around the needle, pull the yarn so it's trapped in between the two needles there, take the empty needle through, so you're picking up the loop, and then again transfer transfer the stitch onto your stitch holding needle. You've now got four stitches on your needle. Okay, so that is your cast on. That is all you need to do for the tail. Now the first row we're going to do is a purl row rather than a knit row. So if you've been following along, you should know your purl. It's very easy. It's just a repeat of what you've been doing. So we take for a purl row, we take our needle and we come in from the top of the stitch. All stitches are now going to transfer onto the opposite needle. So we, we come in from the top of the stitch. So the cross that we've made is now with that empty needle in the front rather than the, at the back. We take the yarn again and we wrap it around that needle. And then we slide that needle through to pick up that loop which is there, and this time we're transferring that stitch right over. Do that again. So from the top of the stitch, you go in with the needle, round with the yarn, slide that needle through, keeping hold of the stitch, slide off the original needle, so you've transferred a second stitch. And we'll do that again. So from the top of the stitch, so you're crossing over that needle on the front, yarn around, slide the needle through, 
keep hold of the loop and transfer the stitch over. So now we've got three. And then of course, we're going to repeat exactly the same with the fourth stitch. So slide that through and transfer over. So we've just done a pearl row. Now, if, again, if you're right-handed, you're going to always transfer the needle that holds the stitches into your left hand. If you're left-handed, you're likely to be transferring the needle into your right hand. I have heard from some people, even if they're left-handed though, they still tend to sort of knit as though they're right-handed or crochet as though they're right-handed. So, you know, it just depends on what's comfortable to you. Let's look at the next row. Row number two says K1 Ink 1. That stands for Knit 1, Increase 1. If you've been following along, you will really have got used to that because we've done this many times. But it also says twice. So the abbreviations in brackets, you're going to do that twice. So what you've got at the end there in the brackets is the number of stitches that you should have on your needle when you've completed. So we're going to do knit one, increase one twice. So very easy to do at the moment. We've got four stitches on the needle. So we're going to go in because we're knitting, we're crossing the empty needle from the bottom of the stitch behind the stitch holding needle. So we're back to where we began really. Take the yarn around and we're going to pull that loop through, but we're not going to transfer that stitch off. Well, we are on this one because we're knitting this one, but the next one we're not. So we're going to pull that stitch off and now we're going to increase one. So to increase, you work in the same method, going into the stitch, round with the yarn, pull that through, but instead of sliding that, need, that stitch off, because that would just give you a regular stitch, you go back in with your needle, and if you notice what I'm doing, rather than going in the front of the loop, I'm actually going into the back of the loop. Yarn around, pull that stitch through, now you slide that off, so you've created two stitches from one. So we're going to repeat that again because it tells you to do it twice. So the first stitch is a knit, so into the stitch, yarn around, slide through, pick up the loop and transfer over. Second stitch is the increase, so we go into the stitch, yarn around, slide that down, pick up the loop, but don't transfer that stitch over. You want to go back with the needle into the back of that loop yarn around, slide through, pick up, now you transfer over. So if we've done that correctly, we should have six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Are you tired, Scott? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'll be honest with you, I'm so disappointed in myself. <laughs> I, I, I'm, just, I'm meant to be a grown no. man, I'm <laughs> 30, 40 something, whatever, and, <laughs> and I'm just... <laughs> I've been here for five minutes, I'm still on the same one. Oh, no, you knew you started <laughs> I was watching so well. you. I know it started so well, but I like everything I do, it ends up in disappointment. I'm just, I'm just oh. having a little go. Anyway, let me, if you've got any words, <laughs> <laughs> don't close up on my hands. <laughs> If you've got any words of encouragement for me, then let them know at studio at thecraftstore.com. Um, yeah, I just... It's, I, do, I can't even hold in my hands. I feel like I'm a, I feel like a three-year-old. That, that, that someone's going to come and do an aeroplane spoon and so I put food in oh, my mouth with them. I can't maybe, even hold them. It's a shame we haven't had the crochet together, Scott. Oh. Because it's your fault that I'm here doing all of this. Is this my fault? Because of the mug Oh, the mug. I should have <laughs> bought the... I could bring the mug on. Yeah, yeah, it did all start there. It did all start there. 10%, thank you. Right, OK. Next <laughs> row, we're on to row number three. Oh. Now, with the tail, you're going to see a pattern emerging and there will be homework even though this is the the last one today there will be homework oh. because we need to get right up to 38 stitches oh, but everything blimey. that you will do <laughs> this is just turning into a retirement Every, project for me <laughs> everything that you will do at home you will have done before you should know exactly where you're going with it so let's have a look at row number three we're back to the pearl so we are going to do that again because you know it is a refresher for everybody so there's no increase no decrease so it's straightforward pearl row so with pearl remember you take your needle and you come in from the top of the stitch and you cross your needle over at the front not the back you take your yarn you wrap it around but then it's just the same really you're sliding that needle through to pick up the loop 
and transferring the stitch over. No increase, no decrease, so you don't have to go back in with the needle. You're just repeating the same process. So again, from the top of the stitch, yarn around, slide that through so you pick up the loop and you transfer over. Same again. So if we don't drop any stitches, we will have six stitches at the end of this row. I dream of six <laughs> stitches. Well, you know, you, you often hear the knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, don't you? Yes, I do, I've this heard that. This is where it comes from. Oh, uh, yeah, OK, I've heard that. I okay. just, it's the transferring it from one needle to another. That's for me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> one just... last purl into the top. Yarn around the needle. Slide that through and take that last stitch from the left hand needle or whichever hand you're holding that with you've transferred all those stitches again so your purl is there now the next row row number four very similar actually to row number two but because you've got more stitches it can't be exactly the same so you'll notice it says knit two increase one twice so we're back to the knit row remember if i just bring in my piece here with the knit row this is how it looks on your purl side that is how it looks Obviously, with the yarn that was sent out, it's a little bit too difficult to see that on the camera. At home, you should be able to see the difference, but that, again, is why I'm using a different yarn, so it makes it very, very clear. So we're on to row number four, and we're going to knit two. So remember, on a knit row, we go in from the bottom of the stitch, cross the needles over, so the empty needle is at the back. We go around with the yarn, we slide through, get that loop and then you transfer that stitch over and we're going to do that twice because it says knit two so basic knit stitch and then we're back to that increase again so we're increasing this next stitch so we go in from the bottom as though we're doing a regular stitch around with the needles slide through and pick up the loop but you don't take you don't transfer that needle or that stitch straight away you then take the needle that you're putting the stitches on into the back of that same loop. Yarn around, slide it through, pick up the loop again, and you've just increased a stitch. You're doing that method twice, the instructions in the bracket, so it's knit two, so it's a regular knit. One, two, and then the increase. You go into the stitch, round with the yarn, slide it through, don't transfer, go back into the back of the loop, yarn round slide it through then you transfer and now you'll see one two three four five six seven eight stitches <laughs> how are you getting on scott well the one that i had done come on done <laughs> but i've gone backwards i've gone backwards um but it's all right. It's, it's good right. because uh, what it's done is a huge amount of respect for knitters now. <laughs> oh, do you know, we've progressed far enough. We might be doing cable and uh, circular needles and all sorts. When are, we, uh, when are we back on with you again? Fair <laughs> Isle. <laughs> right, just, just I just need to. I will just need to focus on that little bit of the transferring yeah. from one to the other. Do you know, it is other. much easier, you know, if when times allow if you've got somebody who can sit with you, if you know somebody that yes. can, if you do yes, get a little bit stuck, who can sit with you, and it, especially if you're both right-handed or both left-handed, and right. you work in the same way, because it, it, you know, it is, and you're kind of looking at the screen and you're watching, I presume, you're seeing me do everything I was kind of backwards, <laughs> aren't you? Because I, our right is our left and vice versa yes. on screen. Yes, I'm very confused. <laughs> It doesn't take much. It's a Not long for day. everybody at home. You're fine. You're it's just okay. In here. No excuses for anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> now I just did row number three. No, I didn't. I did row number four. I've just done while we were chatting, and nobody noticed. I actually did row number five as well. So I've just purled a row. Um, you know how to purl now. I'm just going to do row six because we're increasing again, and then we're going to move on to the making up of the cat. Right. Okay. So simply because. It can be a little bit tricky. Um, we've had a couple of emails come through, actually. Have we? Well, we were, um, uh, we've had so now. Who's this from? Isbel. Oh, so <laughs> oh, we're a great <laughs> double act, Catherine. Aww. We're a great double act, which is, which is nice as well. Ten <laughs> out of ten for effort, but that was sent through before my one knot fell off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Isbel. 
And lots of thank you to Catherine for all your hard work. Oh, thank this you together very as much. Well. So that's lovely as well. Thank you very much, Dee Ismail. Uh, Mandy, hello, very good evening, Mandy. Lovely to have your company as well tonight as well. Oh, <laughs> thank you to <laughs> Catherine for your patience. I think that's with the Jeanette and generic uh, audience, not just with me. I think I've tested yours. Um, your teachings are great as well. Oh, and your new cardigan oh, looks great. I, I wonder if this is Mandy who's been on my group this afternoon. Right. Well, because Josie's also emailed in, I think, they're also saying your cardigan looks great. I might have to stand up because you can't see much well, of it. Well, go on, give us a twirl. You see, this is what I was saying about this is your fault, Scott. Oh, well, no, hang on, we because started with an egg warmer. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I made this up. I just, yeah, this is beautiful. crocheted. It's beautiful. I made it up. There we go, look, look, look. It's got a little frill on it. Isn't that lovely? And the lovely thing about this cardigan is you can so, so easily adapt it to fit any size. Oh. You can make it longer, shorter, short sleeves, three quarter sleeves, long Ooh. sleeves, no sleeves. If I'm making it very, very short sleeves. Very, very easy. I love it. And you might be looking at it and thinking, oh, that looks really complicated. For anybody that followed the crochet craft along, oh, yeah. all of the stitches that I've used in this cardigan were used in our crochet craft along. Oh, okay. You might not think it to look at it, but they were. So oh. if anybody, man well, I know lots of people managed to do it, so they would be able to make this. So, is there a pattern then for it? Is, is there a there pattern available? There will be. Ah, watch this space, is it watch this space? <laughs> Watch this space. Uh, we do have other um, uh, craft alongs as well. If you want to go for more crochet, they are coming up. Do we know the dates of the crochet one? 5th of August, 5th of August. Oh, it's the one on the screen. I say I'm blinded. <laughs> I'm blinded by the knitting. Uh, I, take, I take the hat off and the vision went. Uh, 5th of August, £8. Uh, saving on that one as well. So uh, £8 for that one starts the 5th of August uh, to go through that with Catherine as well, which is absolutely brilliant. Don't worry, I might not be there. Don't worry. <laughs> You'll be OK. You won't have to put with, 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 with force for it at the back of the class. If you are there, you will be having a go. Oh, will be. You and will maybe be. a little bit of private tuition before we'll we see. get there. We'll, we'll maybe see. Not there. We'll, we'll see. See. Right, okay, so I, I just very quickly did row number six, so it's it's almost the same as the two previous increased rows, but again, because you've already increased extra stitches, now you can see it's knit three increased twice. And then row seven right through to 36, you're just going to work stocking stitch, and stocking stitch you've already done, that is where you do a row of purl and a row of knit, a row of purl, a row of knit. You just alternate it. So very, very easy to do. Um, the tail, that's it. You've done all those stitches already throughout the process, so there's no need to worry about completing that. There is little instructions at the end of the pattern telling you how to sew up. We are going to look at the sewing up and the completion of the cat now. The only problem I've got is because I've done the demonstration one in the chunky yarn, and also a piece in the yarn that everybody else has got. Mine don't match. Oh, OK. Um, everybody should have two of these. The homework last week was to complete the first one, apart from casting off. And also, uh, you know, you needed two of those. If yeah. you haven't made your second one yet, it is not a problem. We'll, we can still show you how to proceed with that. Great. OK, so it doesn't look much like a cat at all, does it, at the minute? Um, not at the moment. It doesn't, does it, now? Um, you're making the tail, so we haven't got the tail yet, so the tail will be added on. But you should have found in your kit that you've got some eyes and some washers. These are your safety eyes. Now, if you've already put these together, that was a big mistake because you probably won't be able to get the washers off the back. Ah, uh, oh. Okay, because they are safety eyes. Now, you've not been provided with a little nose or any whiskers or anything, so the only thing you will need to find is some black thread or yarn or whatever colour you want to do. You could actually do white. If, you, if you've knitted with the darker colour, then you could use white for the whiskers. If you've knitted with the white, because you're provided with both, you can work with black or whatever colour you want. Whatever you can lay your hands on will be fine. Now, I am going to show you how to stitch together. Don't worry if you haven't got that thread right now and if you haven't got a wool needle right now, because you can catch up. It can be part of your homework. Because I've only got one half here, I'm actually going to fold my cat in two, so it's only going to be half a cat. Oh. Mm. Okay, which is it is a bit of a shame, isn't it? But there you go. It's only <laughs> to show it's only to show you <laughs> how to stitch together. I'm actually going to use some of this black yarn to stitch together. You don't have to do that. You can use the same yarn that you've been sent, 
Uh, it's just so you can might hopefully can see it a little bit better. Do you know, I have got half of a, a white cat here. I wonder if I could... Yeah, we can do it this way. Let's do half a white one and half a black one. That will help. You've, I've, I've got little stitches because you've got my needles. I like oh, to pull it sorry, all off, do you, you need see. the needles? No, 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 it's fine. Cleaned it's up. fine. Cause, so the white yarn, I've discovered, if you've been knitting with that one, is slightly thicker than the darker yarn. So again, anybody that's used that, you'll find that yours is a little bit bigger. Um, you can see the difference here as I put these two together. So the chunkier the yarn, the bigger things will knit. Right. Okay, the thinner the yarn, the smaller they will knit, but that's fine. So when you've got two pieces the same, let's pretend these are, what you're going to do is find your knit side of one piece and your knit side of the other. Make sure the stitches are going in the same direction. So you're basically putting your right sides together. Okay, because okay. we're going to stitch the edges. So you should, if you've got knitted everything in the same yarn, which you should have done, you'll find that your cast on stitches match up. The shaping of your cat matches up. I'll have to stretch this one over a little bit because obviously mine is odd and I've only got half a white cat there. So I'm going up <laughs> to the centre point. It's fine. That's fine because we haven't got time to do no. the whole of the stitching no, anyway. No. So you just want to thread your needle up. And do you know what? There's different ways you can stitch and I wouldn't worry too much about the stitching and whether it's neat or not. If you're using the same yarn to sew, you shouldn't really see it. Uh, you can do what we call a whip stitch around the edge or we can do a back stitch. Now, I'm going to do a back stitch on this one or am I going to do a whip stitch? Does it really matter? Does it really matter? Do, we'll do a bit of both. Right, so where you can see I've got the end of the cast casting on here and also here I'm just making sure that those edges line up I'm just going to pick up the edge of the work with my wool needle I tend not to put a knot in it I tend just to pull the tail through to a certain point leave it an inch or so and then go back over again and then I thread my needle through the loop that I've just made because that will lock that into position for me okay so oh. that's that's nice and solid if I pull that tight okay you can go over that stitch one more time if you wish to make sure it's really secure now you want to start at one side of your casting on and you're going to work around the whole of the shape of your cat and you're going to stop at the other end which will leave a gap at the bottom because obviously you've got to stuff this yeah yeah so obviously I can't work all the way around but we'll go as far as we can so if you are doing almost a whip stitch around the edge all you need to do is take a stitch from the edge work quite you know as close as you can to the edge you don't want to take your needle really far into the work pick up the stitch try and match it up with the stitch of the other layer and work the two through together so you're just picking up the edge of each row and i'm literally just over sewing that just taking it right over the edge so even with the black you can barely see that mm. So that is, that's an easy way of doing it. If you've never done any sewing before, that is so, so easy just to do that. Don't leave big gaps in between the stitches. You don't want to sort of skip, you know, rows. And so if I'm here, I don't want to suddenly go to there because you will see it when you turn this the other way oh, out. Oh, I see. Right. Okay, so keep them fairly close together. Basically, you want to try and pick up more or less. I know it's difficult because of the yarn being a chenille to see the rows clearly with this particular yarn, but really you want to be picking up a stitch on the end of each row but don't fret if you can't do that right so that's one way of doing it if you wanted to do a back stitch you could do now with a back stitch i'd cast on in exactly the same way but i'd bring that thread through just on the inside of the work and i would go through both layers and you can do this one stitch at a time through to the back back from the back to the front but this time bringing the needle forwards, pull that through. Then I go back to where I was, if I could see it, through to the back, pull that through. From the back, come forwards. Again, you need to work in front of where you've just been. Pull that through, then you track back again. So you're basically just stitching. You're almost joining those stitches together because you're coming out forwards, but then going back again. And that way, you'll end up with a little ridge around the edge, but that's fine. So it depends which way you want to do it. Both ways will work. It's a personal choice, whichever right, okay. you think is going to be easiest. Then when you've gone all the way around and you turn your work over, 
or you turn it the right side out then you shouldn't be able to see the stitches and you'll have a nice join all the way mm. around okay so that is something you'll need to do before you use the stuffing now before you stuff fully you will need to put the eyes in position as well okay now with your stuffing um, I presume it's just it's almost the same as what I've got here. I brought some from home, but it's just toy stuffing, so yours is likely to be the same. Let's pretend we've stitched all the way around there. So we'll put the stuffing inside the cat so you can start to see the shape. Now you can see where that little bit is in the middle. It's almost like a little waist of the cat. So that's the, the center point. So you've got the bottom of the body, then you've got the top bit, but it still looks very odd at the moment because we haven't really got any proper shaping. Put a little bit of stuffing in there, not too much because you've got to get those eyes in position. But it helps you sort of see where you want these to go. The ears are going to be formed very simply by tying some wool around the corners. That is all you're going to do for those ears to shape them. Obviously, oh. you'll have your two sides together and you will have the stuffing in there. I'll bring in the other cat in a second so you can see. But when you've got a little bit of stuffing in, just so you've got some shaping, then you can decide where the face wants to be. It wants to be above this centre point, obviously. So you can obviously put the, the eyes in from the top of the work, but you're going to have to add the washers from the inside because by now you've stitched all the way around apart from the bottom opening. Okay, so place the eyes in. Don't put the washers on until you're really happy with where this is going. If you want to, again, a good tip would be put the eyes in without the washers, fully stuff the cat itself so it's really padded out and see how it looks. When you're happy with the amount of stuffing, then take some of it out so that you can then get in with those washers. Okay, you might even find it easy to turn this inside out again. But if you pre-stuff it before putting the washers on so you know you're happy with the shape of it, and you can really quite pad this out because you want to give it a rounded yeah, shape. Yeah, you don't yeah, want yeah. it to look flat. At the minute, it's just two pieces and it looks very, very flat. So let's pretend I'm happy with the stuffing with mine. To put the washers on, if you turn it the other way around or you just can slide these up inside, you've got the opening at the bottom. You want to put the washers on. Can you see they're shaped? They've got a little delve in them or a little, little bit that sticks out at the bottom. Can we see that on the camera? I think we can, can't we? where you've got the little delve oh there we go yes that's yeah. the side that you're going to slide onto the eye itself so you just literally push that on as tight as you can right. that is not going to go anywhere right. that's why it's important to make sure that you're happy with the placement before you before put these you in place i've no in. idea if mine are right or not and it's too late now if they're not let's <laughs> find <laughs> out <laughs> so you can really you need to give those a quite a big push because they're quite tight fitting but the ridges of the backs of the eyes themselves will not allow that to slide back off right okay so there you would have your eyes in position now what I'm going to do I'm going to bring in obviously this is a completely different yarn again and this is a really really tiny sort of uh, size one I've got a little plastic nose you can stitch a nose on there so we'll do that. I'll show you how to stitch a nose. Okay. Okay. A different yeah. way of doing yeah, that'd it. Yeah, be handy. Yeah. So if you find some of your yarn at home, and again, you can do this when it's fully stuffed, if you like. Once you're happy with the stuffing, you can close that bottom opening as well. Right. Obviously, you're going to oh, stitch okay. that from the yeah. outside, but using the same yarn, you're not going to see it. So for the nose, what I'm going to do is take some of the yarn. It doesn't really help being black, does it? because it's you're not going to see it very well let me just double this up so take your yarn probably do it double think about the size that you want obviously i want it to fit in between the two eyes so i'm going to use the double yarn and i'm going to just make a couple of little loops don't hmm. worry about the ends you can cut those off afterwards or you can go in from the other side if you wish a couple of yeah they look like whiskers now don't they couple of little loops I hope you can see this because I'm working black on black you can do maybe maybe do three or four loops actually depending on the thickness of your yarn so you're just going across and when you've done that I turn this this way I'm going to take the same yarn and I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to go the other way around so I'm going from underneath those loops oh, through to yeah, the top yeah. 
and I'm just going to keep doing that so those stitches are nice and tight together. Isn't it amazing that all of a sudden this starts to take on <laughs> the characteristics <laughs> of just when you, as soon as you put a nose in yeah. with your two eyes, yeah. uh, it takes on a completely different format. It, it really does, yeah. And you can see there with going over the top with those little stitches, yeah. turn that to side, it forms a little bump, a little nose. Yeah. So then you can just take your needle through to the other side and fasten off. So by fastening off, all you need to do is sort of work from the other side, just run through those stitches a little bit, go through the loop that you've made and pull it tight to lock that in position. You can do that a couple of times and that is locked in position. And then you can cut that yarn away. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I mean, if you find it easier to, to um, put the eyes and the nose and the whiskers on before you stitch it all together, you can. I normally, when I'm doing my crochet and everything, I normally put all the bits together and stuff them before doing all these bits because it gives me that proper shape and you can see. But it does change it, Scott, because yeah, it you can see now, even with no whiskers on there, the little eyes, the little nose, yes. if yeah. that was stitched all around, it's, taking shape, isn't it's it? taking shape. We still haven't got the ears in, but I will be showing you that as well the, the whiskers themselves are also very easy so if I get a little bit more of the yarn how much time we got um, six oh, minutes we'll be all right then all right, we'll be it? fine we'll be fine I might have done another stitch by then. <laughs> <laughs> um, well uh, due to health and safety I had to stop um, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, the, the speed I was going, there was smoke coming off of the needles there. <laughs> oh, that was going at my ears. I wasn't sure. Oh, dear. Right. I'm just starting from the inside. Just locked that stitch on. And I'm going to come through where the nose is. And I tend just to come right at the side of the nose. Decide how long I want that whisker. I, I like to go with the middle one first. So I'm going to decide that's how long that whisker is going to be. So I'm going to go in with the needle, back almost to where I started you pull that through and if you're doing this when the stuffing's in there go through the stuffing as well it will help secure everything oh you know you can feed that not really deep but obviously yeah, you can yeah. take it through when you come back through where the nose is you can then decide where your next whiskers go in so I'm going to go there I'm going to go a little bit shorter with that one actually come back again pull that through so we've now got two whiskers and then obviously I'm going to do a third whisker. So I'm going to go in with the needle there and I don't need to come back out this time because I've now got the three whiskers. Actually, I can come back out because I can come out at the other side of the nose because we haven't done that side and then just try and match up. So do exactly the same thing. So one whisker, go back there. I'm just using a, thing, a single thread for this one. Back there, back to the side of the nose again. Whisker number three. So we've now got the whiskers oh. in position. Okay, so again there, you can just fasten off from the inside. Doesn't matter where you do it, because nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to see it. You can, you know, bring the yarn down to the bottom if you like and fasten off down there if you don't want to sort of feed this all the way up again. So when you've done that, all that's left to do are those ears. Little ears, yeah. Yes, so obviously this, we'll pretend this is all stitched round. And all you need to do is get a piece of yarn again. Ideally the yarn that you've been knitting with because it's not going to show. Get, uh, you can double it up if you wish. Try not to have too much stuffing on the top corners because the, this is what's going to make the ears. You want to come down by an inch, an inch and a half, something like that. Pinch that in pinch an inch <laughs> hmm. and you are literally going to tie the yarn tightly around oh. the corner and that will form the ears so there's nothing <laughs> clever about that at all it's just very very simple to do and obviously you do one at both sides uh. and then if you want to you can also tie around the neck area so that middle point if you want to pull the head in as well so it gives oh, you a more definition yeah the yeah i see uh, yeah so it depends on the look you want you can have quite a whimsical comical cat if you leave it as it is or if you want to pinch that in then you get that rounded head and i would top that with a little bit of ribbon around the middle in fact i'm going to pinch this one off here because just so you can see it on the dark yarn 
Let's, we're just pretending this is stuffed out. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how it does. Look, put, look, it does. Put him a nice little collar on. You could even, you know, put put a little uh, jewel or um, something to hang off a collar. Put an initial on there, personalise it, give it as a gift or something. Obviously, you're going to finish your little tail, and the tail will be attached to the back of the cat and curl around the front. So when you've got that all all together, all in position, I so love simple, it. so I simple. Well, you say, <laughs> I mean, it is so simple. Once you master that initial, just first, first one, first one. Oh. Uh, do we have any other homework to carry the on with? The homework was to finish the tail because you need to make sure that you've done that. Actually, it tells you to go to row 36 and then 38 has got a knit two together to the end. Uh, if you want to make the tail longer, you should have plenty of yarn so you can continue with the stocking stitch, which is a row of knit, row of pearl, row of knit, row of pearl. So if you want to make the tail longer, you can. You can adapt this to how, oh, how okay. you feel. Okay. Well, listen, on behalf of everybody that's been watching and doing that, thank you very much for that. <laughs> I, I feel that we need to, when we're allowed to, uh, a bit of it closer for all that, I just did a bit of personal tuition to catch up on that, but that's fine. I, I, know, <laughs> I know where my weaknesses are. Don't need to shout them out. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> uh, but thank you so much. Absolutely You're very brilliant. Uh, honestly, if you've really enjoyed this craft along as well, and the whole idea is it's got to be fun as well, hasn't it, while we learn. But we do have another craft along that's coming up for you as well. Uh, so, okay, it's our very own. Katie Barwin is going to start there on the 7th of August uh, and that one if you'd like to go for the knitted hat knitted cosy hat that's the next project that you can see here so uh, get that get that one sorted out get that out to you and then you can be involved as well and also the hedgehog uh, that's coming up very soon another one's also been very very popular indeed lovely projects to go on uh, honestly it's been Wherever you are with it, if you're doing what I'm doing, rewind, catch up again, go through all of those things as well. But it's at your pace, which I think is what's lovely about all these. So, Catherine, thank you so much. You're welcome. Indeed. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, when are you back on with the... Is it... Uh, I'm back presenting on Monday, but with the crochet... Ooh, is it, it's the 5th, 5th of August, is it 5th, isn't it? 5th. We start that one, three weeks. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see you again very, very soon as well. Thank Certainly you very will. much indeed, Cathy. Thank you very much. Have a cracking rest of your evening, won't you? There's more coming up 